what we were doing before in the sales process was really inconsistent. I just felt like I could never remove myself from that sales process as we continue to grow. Now with the mentorship and the program, we have a lot of help in the direction that we're going and focusing on what's working, focusing on which bottle next to fix to keep growing in order to grow quickly, especially if you're at that 50, 100K a month mark, you need to work with people who've been there. It's not just working with someone who has been taught frameworks. It's people like you who've actually implemented them. You know, as we've gone through the ranks with you guys, it's always been an investment into our self growing our skill set to set us up in the long term. And right now we're at about 100 to 140K per month. Welcome, Matt. I just want to say congratulations so far on everything you've achieve but please introduce yourself uh, to everyone who doesn't know you what you do where you were before and where you are now i'm matt so for the last two years we've been running a software development agency uh, and then within the last few months we've been transitioning that into a growth partner model uh, mostly just because of issues we had continue to grow the agency uh, we're relying a lot on referrals and inbound leads and then that became an issue for us and now after switching to the gp model we've been building systems to grow more scalably and consistently. That's great. And just revenue wise, kind of where are you hovering at at the moment? Yeah, right now we're at about 100 to 140K per month, just depending on the month. In terms of being in a development agency, what made you think that moving and transitioning over to the growth partner was kind of the right thing for you? And what made you kind of take that leap? I found it difficult in the traditional agency model to sell consistently because a lot of the time the incentive structure for a traditional marketing agency or a traditional development agency isn't aligned with that of the client um so i think that realization was the big pushing factor to transition to a gp model where i felt more like we were working in conjunction with the client and incentivized in the same way to grow them and make sure they were successful that's great and how is that trying to change help you in terms of selling more deals and not just with the GP model, but also what you've been doing previously as well. Before we weren't doing any outbound. So I think that now, A, with the mentorship and the program, we have a lot of help in the direction that we're going and focusing on what's working, focusing on which bottle next to fix to keep growing. Uh, But before we didn't really have a scalable system to acquire new clients, to get new leads in the door. And now we have built outbound systems to consistently get calls booked and set up a sales process that we're confident that we can consistently close. What does that sales process kind of look like for you currently? The sales process starts with a discovery for us. So really we're trying to just determine the client's problem, dig into them and assess where we can help them Uh, because we work with the GP side and the development side of things still. um, There's a lot of different offers we can segment them into. So it's just discovering, you know, what's the best way for us to help them? What are their pain points? And then how can we come in and solve them? And so that's the first call. And then the second call for us is presenting a proposal custom to solutions for their issues to help them grow or to help them with the product side. And how has that been balancing between what you've always done as an agency and also the GP one and kind of selling both of those at the same time? How is that actually working for you? Oh, it's going well because I think what we were doing before in the sales process was really inconsistent. You know, a lot of what we're doing before was just on the development side and it took just a ton of building rapport with the client, with the prospect. And I just felt like I could never remove myself from that sales process as we continue to grow. Whereas now our system is set up, it's much more structured on the sales side. And we're getting towards, you know, a refined process where I can eventually hire a sales team underneath me. So it's, I don't have to do the entire sales process for everyone and build that rapport, spend months building trust to sign a new client. And in terms of obviously being in that development niche beforehand it's nothing to do with growth right so i'm wondering if there's maybe a little bit of hesitation around making that switch over and 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 kind of leaning more into this new model where you're like i don't know if this necessarily work for me because i know there's a lot of people out there who might be doing different things maybe it's product development it's content it's all these kind of things that maybe don't necessarily relate in growth and are curious how you approach that and why you still made that decision to join. Every company wants to grow. Pretty much every company wants to grow. And the way I look at it is there's going to be different constraints to the growth. Sometimes it's product, sometimes it's content, sometimes it's lead flow and building pipeline. So now I think we're just a a more full service agency where fundamentally we're trying to help them grow, whether that's through building outbound channels, whether that's through building pipeline for them with the GP model or whether that's through you know, ameliorating their 
product issues that are holding them back from that next stage. It's just diagnosing what's the constraint for them. So if you had to take everything that we've done with you over the last few months and take it into three real key things that have happened, what are the three things that have allowed you to kind of progress the way that you have so far? What a mentality shift to focus on just the bottlenecks. It's really helpful to have someone outside of the business to look at what you're tracking, what you're spending your time on, and then focus you towards fixing the bottleneck that's stopping you from growing more quickly. The second one is building outbound systems that actually work. So understand the messaging, understand the way to do that, to build consistent pipeline. And then the third, I think, would just be figuring out how to refine the offer over time. Like that shift in the offer, Chris, has changed significantly over the last couple of months um, and figuring out you know, what direction to take it, what offers have worked, how to structure the offer has been really helpful for us. It's interesting though, because at you know, 100 to 140K a month, you would... I think a lot of people will presume that you're pretty good at finding constraints and growing businesses. Why is it that you think even at that level, you still want outside support and you still think that's the thing that's going to allow you to hit kind of the next level? I think that a lot of businesses can get to still 100K, 140K per month based on referrals, based on their network. Um, A lot of them, I think, haven't really figured out how to consistently and quickly grow beyond that. Like we could have kept growing, but I think that refining the offer, figuring out how to scale pipeline quickly uh, was a game changer for us. And we're always trying to grow faster. So it's just been, how can we add jewel to the fire? How can we keep growing and accelerate that growth? In terms of the GP deal that you have, what's that kind of price point and offer looking like at the moment that you're actually selling to these companies? For our GP deals, we're looking at a fixed monthly retainer with a percentage of that new revenue that we bring them. Um, and the price point for that, we hover uh, between six and eight K per month, fixed monthly retainer and generally around a 10% revenue share. When it comes to selling these kind of deals, has it been easier or harder than you expected to, to kind of sell them? I think honestly, it depends on who you're talking to and assessing their needs. So you have to find the right person to talk to who really has a need for it and it's a good fit for it. Uh, but I think once you get on the phone with those people and find those people, it's a really compelling offer. And the sales process that we've been using based on help from the growth partner is really effective for closing those deals, framing the conversations, then walk them through discovery and then laying out options for them that make sense. And obviously there's a lot of different, you know, people you could go to for for mentoring, for support, for to help you like identify those constraints. What was it that when you looked at what we were doing and how we supported you you're like yeah this is the right thing because as well transparently for everyone else out there you know matt you've kind of gone up the tiers internally in terms of the level of support you've asked from us and wanted to to go down what does that decision look like and why have you continued to invest in yourself yeah you guys you guys have built a ton of other businesses and like helped helped hundreds of entrepreneurs to build very similar businesses and we've been in other masterminds and other programs as well. Problem is they're very fragmented. Everybody's doing something different. Whereas this program is really helpful because you guys have been through exactly what we're going through. So you always have a clear direction as to like what we focus on next. And I also found that the one-on-one coaching uh, was really helpful because yeah, sometimes when you're in the business, it's hard to zoom out and focus on next steps or strategy moving forward. And the one-on-one coaching to pinpoint the bottlenecks and help us work through them has been very helpful. That's great to hear. And I think a lot of people, when they hear one-on-one coaching, sometimes they're like, you know, uh, they're worried that they're going to be passed off to some, you know, virtual assistant or something. Can you just share your experience on what that's actually been like, the kind of caliber of people you're speaking with and how that supported you throughout? Yeah, the one-on-one coaching, everybody that we worked with on the team has been exceptional. You know, they understand the systems, how to actually apply them in practice and what really works. It's not just It's not just working with someone who has been taught frameworks. It's people like you who have actually implemented them um, and like the rest of your C-suite. And we also worked with lots of good people on your team who are just exceptional at sales. So the call reviews, getting feedback on the sales process and our calls that we're making to improve it. um, That's been really good. And from people who have done sales for years and have a great understanding of what it should look like. And how much have you used and abused us when it comes to actually you know, having those core reviews, having those one-to-ones inside that Slack channel, like how much support do you actually get in this thing? 
a ton because it's from all different people too. Like you guys have all really walked the walk before and actually implemented it and grown your own agency using these frameworks. But what I really appreciated too was that you have, you know, if we need help with paid ads or we need help with technical support or we need help with sales coaching, there's always someone there to assist us across the team who's an expert in that area. And obviously you mentioned call reviews. Can you just specify exactly what that process looks like? So people on the outside just have a a bit of context of really just how much and the lengths we go to to support in this situation. Yeah, the car the car reviews. I don't know how you guys do it. I think it, it must take so much time. <laughs> but basically, we we record all of our discovery and sales calls with our prospects that we're trying to close to get new deals. Those recordings that we send off to you guys get reviewed, and we get notes from other closers um, on you know here's what to improve. Here's where I would have taken the conversation. Here's how to handle x objection that you encountered so that in the future we can continue to get better and optimize our close rate and how many of those calls do we actually review all of them (laughs) we know what it takes to be successful and we know what it takes for you to be successful so yeah it takes a a hell of a lot of time to do those call reviews and get those done correctly but the difference it makes to your business your close rate your success is just so exponentially higher right now as well with the kind of the team that we put in place how do we just to transparently share with everyone like how do we actually like manage that between us because obviously you're busy you're doing 100 140k a month like you don't have the time you have your own team how do we make this so it's quick for you like what does that process look like where you're like yeah this is this is i can continue just to get on with what i need to get on with yeah so what we'll do is if we have an immediate problem uh, we also connect with all the other people in the program so we'll drop it in those channels if we have a certain issue a lot of times someone else has encountered the same problem and they'll help us um and then also we have the whole leadership team your team that'll we'll drop questions to as well and they'll get back to us really quickly on it so you know between the entire community and the direct support that we get from you guys there's always someone there that's experienced the same problem and always happy and willing to help that's great and in terms of the the one-to-one sessions how does that kind of run with people what do they look like because i think one-to-one sessions again it can be you get such a mixed bag out there of like really great one-to-one sessions but then also you can have people that do terrible what is that kind of um how do they play out what do they look like yeah the, the one-to-ones how we've been working is we look at you know what's the bottleneck in the business right now and then we work in two-week sprints so we take that bottleneck, break it down into a set of tasks, and then say, okay, what tasks do we need to do over the next two weeks to fix that problem? It's the same thing we use to manage our entire business, by the way. So like, this is the great thing. What we're doing is like we're taking what works for us at this level and just plugging it straight into and doing it with you, right? And the better part is like, is this works with your clients as well. Like all those GP clients, like if you manage them in the same way, it's just like it's game changing it really is because you just make so much more progress than you could really possibly imagine right now in terms of the level you're at you know that 100 140k a month mark where do you see the next like three to six months going and why again at that level you like yeah that this is these are the right guys to take us to the next level what gives you that level of confidence yeah we we want to hit you know a quarter mil a month for us, I think it's a good next milestone. If we had hit that in the next six months, I would be over the moon. <laughs> I think I think that level of quick growth is something that you guys have been through and shown through growing your own agency at a crazy rate. So after seeing you guys do it and talking to you and understanding your level of experience and how you got there, it seemed like a good fit to work with someone who had, you know, already been on the path that we're trying to emulate and is there anything that kind of surprised you when you came in you're like, oh, actually like this is this is better or worse you know than what you were expecting yeah i think i didn't really expect the level of care that we've gotten coming in like on the outside i wasn't expecting to get call reviews and have you guys listen through all of our calls and give feedback to that level because it takes so much time for you guys so you know that one-on-one coaching the call review and the support that we received it was honestly more than i expected when joining i'm glad we over delivered that's what we're aiming to do so that's that's good to know in terms of the transition that you're going through obviously i think a lot of people have it in their mind where you can't do traditional agency and growth partner it's like yeah you have to burn it down i know all my ads say that so like it's probably my fault but 
that's obviously not the case. And I, there's multiple very successful people like yourself who are kind of proving that. What would you say to anyone who's kind of worried about, you know, you know, do I have to get rid of my agency or like, will this really work for me? Like, should, will this work for my niche and all my offer on these? Yeah. I mean, I don't think that you have to get rid of your traditional agency in order to do this. I think if you're completely embedded in running your day to day of your agency and you have no extra time, it still makes sense to transition your sales process to a GP model where you're going to increase your close rate because you're aligned with the client. Um, for us, how we really looked at it is just that like we've kept our original agency going. We use that. It generates a bunch of cash flow that we use to continue to reinvest into programs like GP to grow more quickly, uh, to introduce additional offers, introduce the GP offer. Because that's really what we've done. We've retained our original agency and then built on the GP model on top to you know, increase pipeline, update our sales process. And then the effects of that have been only positive for the rest of our traditional agency model. Like those tweaks have just improved what we already have. And how is managing both at the same time? Like, are you like, I've just got no time left or like, are we able to actually support you and making sure you have still some life back in you? Yeah, hundred percent. And we've, it's been fine balancing them. I have a a great guy who runs operations on our side to Mm -hmm. remove us. And then you know, bringing in additional hires, you have been really helpful in helping us identify, you know, what role should we fill to free up my time to focus on, you know, working outside of the business and actually focusing on growth. So yeah, working in conjunction with you guys to figure out where to hire, how to streamline our operations so we can grow faster has been really helpful as well. That's one of the, the biggest things that allowed me and Jordan to grow really is we were really aggressive on hiring because we know that in a service-based business, which we are right it's it's a people business like we're here to deliver exceptional results to the 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 clients and for example it's great to hear that we're doing that to you as well but the problem me and jordan faced when we were growing is like we actually didn't know who to hire like we went months without hiring a operations person and, and a project manager and it just means that you get kept in it so like when we're like, oh yeah, by the way, this is who you need to hire. You're just saving so much time and energy and and, and money as well. Like, you know, it's expensive to hire and one out of two hires is typically wrong. So I know you've got a few hires on the way. I know you've got a few deals on the way as well. So I expect to see some quite rapid growth as you take that money, reinvest that back in to continue to grow here. You mentioned that at the level you were at, you know, one of the biggest problems you had was it wasn't really consistent it wasn't really scalable when you come and look at what we've done with you in gp do you think that now you could go and even scale your agency even if you didn't do gp you, let's say you just p- took that away you didn't do a growth partner model do you think with everything that we've showed you you would go and scale and make significantly more money inside of your agency 100 percent. because i think a lot of agency owners they're good at delivery and that's how they get into it like they're good at ads they're good at marketing or they're good at development and but they're not like sales professionals so i think even being able to you know being a founder-led sales agency for us learning actual sales tactics and getting direct one-on-one feedback to improve our close rate improve our sales process you know 100 percent skills that we could take back and just improve or, you know, our close rate and grow the agency, even if we stick with the traditional model. If someone was listening to this and like, you know, I'm good at marketing, not great at sales. Like, what would you say to those people who are listening? I did that sale, sales is a lot about, it's about reps, obviously, but it's also about strategy coming up with a structured process. Like if you're, you can be good at sales, but if you don't have any structure to it, like you can be good at talking, but if you don't have any structure to it, you're still not going to close. So I think that having a clear strategy around the entire sales process from, you know, marketing qualified lead to a close has been really helpful for us. Like if you don't have a structured process, even if you are a really good sales guy, you're not going to be able to grow a team underneath you. Like you need a process to hire and eventually bring people in underneath so you're not doing every single call. And how long did it take for you to kind of implement that and integrate that into everything you're doing to the point where you're starting to see results from that new process? The sales process was actually really, really easy and quick for us to learn and implement. Um, the templates and all the content that we got, we went through and, you know, within weeks we had implemented it, uh, created proposals based on templates that were, you know, custom to us and our offer and the audience that we speak to. Um, that was really quick and easy to implement. And then I think right now we're really working through just getting more and more reps of it to 
you know, now we have the structure and now it's working on, you know, sales as a skill for myself and for the rest of the agency. And how quickly did you sign that first GP deal once you'd implemented everything? We had been in talks with the client, you know, coming into the program. So we had seen the content and we hadn't signed it with you guys, but we'd already been thinking about implementing it. So pretty much right as soon as we started the program, um, we went through and then closed them right away. And then, yeah, going out to other clients, to our network and stuff, we built our blend pretty quickly for additional deals past that. If you had someone who is here sitting on the fence, maybe they're at 50K, 100K, maybe they're at nothing, right? And they're like, I don't know if GP's legit. I don't know if it's real. Like, I, I'm confused. Like, what would you, what's your best advice to them in that situation? And like, what would you tell yourself in that situation? I really believe that you have to invest in yourself. You have to take risks to invest and grow yourself to equip yourself with the skills to grow more quickly so that's always how we've approached how i've always thought about it is you know i think in order to grow quickly especially if you're at that 50 100k a month mark you need to work with people who've been there you need to work hands-on with them who kind of you know been on that path before um to figure out where to go next how to grow more quickly and i know i've every time that we've invested into you guys, you know, as we've gone through the ranks with you guys, it's always been an investment into our self growing our skill set to set, set us up in the long term. And, you know, we've seen great results in doing that and we'll continue to do that moving forward. How does this compare to some of the other masterminds you've been in that you, you mentioned? Yeah, good question. With the other masterminds that we've been in, actually, the types of companies and the problems that they're struggling with vary on like person to person and company to company uh what we really liked about the gp program is that everybody is working on you know on building an agency and based on fundamentals from the program so you know this the content that we get here is much more applicable easier to apply because it's specific to what we're doing whereas a lot of the other masterminds are just very generic it's like okay here's how to look at sales here's how to look at marketing it's just very generic and it takes a lot of work to apply it. Whereas the stuff in this program and the one-on-one help is all from people doing similar things, working together and like solving the same problem. Thank you, Matt. I uh, appreciate that. And I look forward to collecting another case study with you in six months when we get you to that 250K a month mark. I know uh, we've got big ambitions and you've got a few deals coming over the line. So I'm excited to see that as well. Yeah. Love it, man. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it as well. Appreciate it.